The Ugly Child There was a beautiful married couple who got along well and were the envy of all. When the wife discovered she was pregnant, it seemed their world was perfect. How could it get any better? But then... What the hell is wrong with this child? When the beautiful couple saw their son, they were speechless. He looked nothing like them. He was hideous. The couple locked the child away in the house so nobody could see him and raised him in secret. And whenever anybody asked, they claimed he was too weak to go outside. This started to wear on the couple, however, and their once perfect relationship started to break down. More and more, they began fighting over the child. There's no way that child is mine, the husband screamed, blaming his wife for cheating. Yet she had done no such thing, and she got angry in return at these unfounded accusations. The days went on, and the wife became more and more resentful of the boy. She blamed him for everything wrong in her life, and so she decided to kill him. On the boy's sixth birthday, the wife treated him with a kindness he had never seen before, and promised they would go out to celebrate. The boy was going to see the outside world for the very first time. He was so happy and ran around in innocent, childlike glee. Yet, not even seeing this was enough to sway the wife's murderous intentions. The pair reached the edge of a large lake, and there they got in a boat. As they rowed out to the middle of the body of water, the boy complained that he needed to go to the toilet. The wife picked him up and held him over the edge of the boat, telling him to do his business there. The boy undid his zip and peed into the water of the lake. The wife looked around quickly. It was okay. Nobody was watching. After confirming this, she tossed the boy into the water. Then... She returned home like nothing had ever happened. Her husband seemed to understand what had happened and never brought the topic up again. Tearfully, they told their neighbours the boy had died of illness, and that was that. One year later, the couple gave birth to another child. They feared this child would be ugly as well, but those fears were unfounded. This time, their son was adorable and handsome just like his parents. Unlike their first son, the parents treated this boy very well and proudly introduced him to everyone. Next thing they knew, their second born was celebrating his sixth birthday as well. The wife decided they should go out to celebrate, just the two of them. They got in the car and the woman asked her son where he wanted to go. As they approached a rather large lake, the boy suddenly said, I want to ride a boat. The wife was puzzled. It was the same lake where she had killed her firstborn seven years ago. But it was her beloved son's request, so she agreed. They got in a boat and went out into the water. Before long, the son complained he needed to pee. The wife held him up and told him to pee in the water. The boy undid his zipper, but then suddenly he smiled and turned back to look at his mother. His expression changed, and for a moment he looked just like her firstborn. The woman was so surprised that she almost dropped him, but what he said next chilled her to the bone. Mom, don't drop me this time. The Confined Area in Chiba In Ichikawa City, Chiba Prefecture, there is an area you must not enter, called Yawata no Yabu Shirazu. The reason you must not go inside is because it's a confined area. A confined area is a term that's been around for many years. It indicates a special place just for a god. There are cases where a mountain that is worshipped as a god may become a confined area itself. The entire mountain. This may make you think of an extremely holy place, but if you visit Yawata no Yabushirazu for real, you'll be surprised. 
You can find it just a four-minute walk from the JR Motoyawata Station. Head towards the city office, facing the heavily trafficked National Highway, and you'll find a tightly compacted forest. That's it. It's about 17 meters wide and long, and it's said that part of it was destroyed in order to widen the highway. But the size hasn't changed that much since it was recorded in the Edo period. You may feel disappointed upon seeing that it looks like a mere forest, but a certain legend has been passed down here since the times of Edo. That legend states that if you step foot inside the thicket, you'll never step out again. There's a reason that this particular confined zone is famous, even amongst all others. But even so, while it is a forest, it's not exactly large enough to get lost in. Even if you have no sense of direction, there's no way you could get lost inside. Regardless, people still strongly believe today that if you go inside, you'll never come back out. A large fence has even been placed around the forest to keep people from getting in. So why is this place worshipped as a confined area? Many stories have been passed down since the Edo period. For example, it's said that the area was once used by a nobleman, or perhaps it was a graveyard. Some theories suggest that the area was used as Yamato Takeru's encampment, and thus it is awe-inspiring. Other theories suggest that Taira no Masakado, or even his father, Taira no Yoshimasa's graves, are located here. Some say that Taira no Masakado's vassal defended his cut-off head here, until there was nothing left of him but mud. Others suggest that the area was once so dangerous that it was a matter of life or death. For example, inside the thicket is a swamp with no bottom, or the middle contains a basin from which poisonous gas escapes. Both suggestions are recorded in the local history book, Chiba Prefecture, Higashi Katsushika, District Magazine. But these days, there's no swamp to be found, nor is there poisonous gas. Nearby, you can find the Katsushika Hachiman Temple, and it's thought that perhaps there was once a pond here that was used for divine work, but over the years, that tradition has been forgotten. In any case, the legend that, once you enter, you will never leave, that has been passed down since the Edo period, along with various reasons why, continues to this day, although there are no definite answers as to why. One thing is for certain, however, and that is that, over the years, many people have entered the forest to put their courage to the test. Mito Komon, who you may know from the historical play, even stepped foot inside the forest. It's unknown why he did, but inside, he was faced with yokai after yokai. Although he was brave, just like the legend states, he was unable to find the exit. Then, a white-haired aristocrat appeared before him and said, This is not a place for humans to enter. Next thing he knew, Mito was outside the forest. Is it true that if you step inside, you'll face the same dangers that Mito did? Young people often go to ghost spots to test their courage, and yet, there's not a single report of anyone going inside Yawata no Yabushirazu and coming back out alive. Part-time renters There are people who take part-time jobs doing something incredibly simple. They simply have to live in a jikobukken for a month. A jikobukken is a house or apartment where a death has taken place. Because people are less inclined to live in a house where such an incident has taken place, they are difficult to market. There is also a rule that all jikobukken must be advertised as such, unless somebody else has lived in that same property for at least a month. As such, Companies hire these part-time renters to live in various jikobukken for a month. Yes, 
they get paid simply to live there for a month, and that's it. Once they move out, the real estate company no longer has to list the property as a jikobukken, and they can rent it as normal. It's said that the pay for these jobs is quite high. However, as the chance of encountering something paranormal is also quite high, many people actually flee before the full month is up. <laughs> 